I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part three of the Gauge 1 Prairie Tank build. Um, where we finished off last time is with the chassis and I've just um, basically cut some axles, the start of the axles, the main axles. Uh, I've just cut these to the exact length at the moment. This is just a starting point. So we've got the axles there ready and so we've got the basic frame here ready now. And I mentioned in the last episode that we were ready to start looking at the wheels. That's basically the configuration of the wheels. There are two leading wheels, three main drivers and a trailing wheel as well. So what we've got now, is what's turned up now, is the castings for the wheels. Like so, this is how they've, they've come from the, from the foundry. These are the raw castings. These aren't bad actually, because what the foundry's actually done is actually get rid of some of the rough edges in the past when I've had these this has been quite jagged it doesn't really make a big difference but it's a nice um, it's a nice starting point there this is one of the driving wheels and what we'll do now is show you just the process for uh, make for machining the driving wheels start of the process of uh, how this is going to be done now there are probably several ways to machine uh, these cast iron wheels um, I'm just going to use the process the way I do it, it works for me, but I'm sure anyone else watching the video will say, oh no, you do it this way, do it that way, etc, etc. Um, I say, it's, there's no cast iron way, if you'll excuse the pun, the way these should be done. Um, so let's go up and uh, let's go off and set the lathe up and set this up in the machine ready for turning. Uh, the first part of the operation, I see we've got the wheel in the chuck. And because these castings are quite good actually, this will fit nicely in a three-jaw chuck. And it spins pretty well as well. There's no, it's not really running out of touch at all really. That's running pretty good. Also, got the machine on its slower speed. Um, cast iron is a very dirty metal. You get a lot of dust from it. So we'll make a start. The idea is really just to make it smooth. The idea is just to get this a nice smooth, smooth surface, a nice smooth face on there. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Just gently come into touch. And just starting to skim this face very, very gently. So with cast iron, you don't really get swarf, you get dust. And again, it's what they call a friable material. So the, the metal comes off as dust, tiny particles. Put another slight cut on. Right, that's the first initial skimming that's been done. I'll show you that. Now there's a little part of the casting it's still not complete there. I'm not too worried about that at the moment because that's eventually this is all going to be skimmed back even more. But the main thing that we've got is this nice flat surface. Well here's all the first operation done for the castings. I see I've machined all the drivers and the trailing and leading wheels all have their one face machined. Okay just um a quick explanation about the next stage that we're going to go through. I say we've machined these back faces, so that's all looking good. Um, probably a picture is probably worth doing. If we look at the profile of one of these wheels, they look something like this. Okay, so that little that little bit there 
is it's this little face here. And this is the next thing we're going to do. We're going to machine. We're going to machine this face. Um, also, at the same time, we've got to set up these dimensions as well. But the main thing to do is just machine that face and then we can set this distance. So that distance there has to be um, half a millimetre. And conveniently, that actually works out about the thickness of my ruler. So that's quite a useful guide when I'm setting the depth. But that has to be half a millimetre, half a millimetre depth there. The other thing that we will do later on, but it's probably show you now, is this cone that has to be three degrees. So we've got a, a three degree angle there. And this has to be a specific dimension as well. That has to be 1.5 millimetre. But enough of that, we'll come back to that later. The main thing now is to set it up to machine this face, to machine that face, we'll set the gap because we also need to skim to skim these this edge. First thing we did was machine these faces flat. We we'll use a fat, flat surface and what I did I set this up in the chuck set against these parallels. So when I machine these faces here it's going to be parallel with what's behind. So that's the next thing I shall do now is to take a little skim off this face here. Doesn't need a lot, just enough to um, machine the surface. A light cut on. Just enough to break the skin really. And again, with this being in what we call an intermittent cut, you can hear it, you've got to do this gently. That's looking quite good. Oops. Right, that's perfect. Just what I wanted to take that surface, that skin off there. Now this face here has to be set back um, half a millimetre, I think I said. You can see that because we're now actually machining, machining things up parallel and true and still a bit more to come off. You could hear it as I was turning it was running slightly out so it's a bit more to come off. The next job I'm going to do is to put the cone on the wheel. This three degree, three degree cone on the wheel. Um, once I have this cone on, I'll be able to flip it round and then drill the centre and I'll know it's going to be concentric then. So you can see this is the setup I've got. I set it up with the parallels. Remember that face that we machined, this flat face. I use these parallels and set it against the parallel so that's, that's running exact on there and slide the parallels out like so and then we're ready to start putting the cone on. Just start on this outer shoulder first. Okay, and that's the depth we need to go to. So what we will finish up with is something like this. You see on this one here, here's this three degree cone that we put on. And so the 
the idea now is, as we've got to get this central, the idea now is to put that in the chuck that way and then we can drill the centre hole. So this is what I'm going to do now for, the, for um, all the wheels is to go ahead and put this cone on now. Well, here's all the wheels that have all been turned so far the next stage and they've all had their cones put on this little three degree chamfer here so they've all been done now as you can see um, so as I mentioned before is what that gives us the ability to do now is put this in the chuck hold it on that face and we can now drill the hole for the centre of the wheel so that's going to be the next thing that we're going to do just putting the centre drill mark in now it's just a slight drill hole just as a starting point for our main drill this is using a centre drill to do this this is required to be a reamed hole so first of all we're just coming along with our drill to get the initial hole in and then we come through with our reamer now this is something we do by hand we don't use a machine on this it's something we turn the chuck by hand and take the reamer through slowly and this removes just that little bit of excess material so to give our hole the definite size that we want the reamer is just broken through on the other side so I just need to take it through to its full depth this is a slightly tapered reamer so I can still just feel that cutting now. Let's cut the hole and we're through. So there we are. There's our completed hole now. And I shall do this for the other all the other main driving wheels. The smaller wheels have a smaller diameter, but it's the same process. So I shall crack on and do the other five now.